Welcome to the BadgerCast, where we talk about Bitcoin, yield farming, and the future of decentralized finance. My name is Wasabi Boat Research. Nothing you're about to hear is investment, financial, or spiritual advice, but merely the personal opinions of a rotating cast of internet badgers. Check us out and learn how to put your crypto to work at www.badger.com. What's going on? This is the Badger Cast. It's Wasabi. I'm back with Alex the Entrepreneur. And um, Alex, what's going on today? Thank you for having me, Wasabi. So today we are talking about Hack Money, which is one of the main hackathons that Badger uses to match up with new developers and match them with some of the most important and urgent problems that we're trying to solve at Badger and um, has has been one of the, the few really awesome places where we, we find uh, new people and bring them into the team and build the future of Bitcoin and DeFi and, and all that good stuff. So we're just going to give kind of a quick overview of some of the opportunities that we have and hopefully highlight some ways that uh, developers can get onboarded into Badger and DeFi and uh, make the world a better place. How does that sound? Sounds awesome. And uh, yeah, ultimately, Akmine is an amazing opportunity both for uh, entry level developers as well as experienced devs to uh, break into Web3, as well as for us, for Badger, to match with uh, uh, aspiring developers or really skilled developers and uh, ultimately onboard them to core. Awesome. So could you give us just a high level overview of how Badger hires technical talent, whether that be front end or on the Solidity side? Yeah, um, I mean, I'll start by saying that uh, uh, we basically let uh, your work uh, speak uh, for for you. So ultimately, uh, the, the the best way to uh, join um, Badger is through bounties. As in, uh, we will uh, go on a hackathon. We're gonna put a bunch of uh, prizes, and then uh, we typically uh, will follow up with the number one or uh, top two uh, candidates, top two people that submitted the best uh, bounties. A bounty could be something like uh, uh, writing a yield farming strategy for Bitcoin. And so we'll pursue, you know, the, the best two uh, submitters. Or then, or you could be writing, uh, uh, you know, a custom code or a custom integration or uh, finishing some other uh, type of work. Uh, but ultimately, uh, we basically have a bounty. It could be a, a fairly priced bounty uh, for the work. And then uh, we will uh, follow up with the best uh, uh, developers uh, there. Uh, from my experience, uh, there is a massive difference even between hiring the, the best and the second best. So if you, if you really want to shine, you basically want to be the best. As in, you don't want to submit you know, two or three bounties. You just want to do one and do it incredibly well. Uh, because uh, it just uh, uh, makes such a, a massive difference. Once we uh, find a, a potential uh, talented uh, developer that uh, uh, and talented to us really just means that they're willing to put the extra effort to 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 do a great job. We're just gonna follow up with typically what is a one to one bounty, which means we're gonna do perhaps a phone call, you know, a, a Zoom call or whatever. Uh, if you wanna be anon, we have uh, Jitsi. Whatever, we'll, we'll get in touch and then we'll come up with a one-to-one -one bounty, which is basically another uh, limited amount of work that uh, we agree on for a specific, you know, specific pay. It's paid work. And then uh, after that, if we, uh, the goal of that second bounty is to get you to meet other people at Badger, uh, because what we're going to do after is we're going to vote you in, basically. We're going to talk to other people that are already core members of Badger. And we're going to ask them if they had a positive experience working with you and if they, uh, uh, they're they going to vouch for you. And ultimately, if they do, we're going to then invite you to join Core. Uh, and so this will be the uh, the ideal way in which we are. Obviously, uh, every candidate is different. Every story is a little bit different. Some people take a little longer to join Core. Other people join it a little faster. But ultimately, uh, it's through working and through uh, paid bounties. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not a developer, but I have companies and have hired people and like that's always much closer to my hiring philosophy like you you read like hacker news about how people are getting hired at like the fang companies or like big tech and it's like these kind of coding interviews where they put you in a room and you're doing code on a whiteboard and it's these algorithms that maybe you studied in university but then you get hired and it's kind of not really relevant to the day-to-day -day stuff of what you're working on right like it just seems like hiring based on connecting people to the actual problems that we're facing at Badger and having them do actual work that could be shipped as part of our code base just uh, 
makes so much more sense. Yeah, I mean, I'll give you a dumb example, but like if you're, uh, you know, if you're playing Fortnite, you basically want to hire the person that is going to win. So we're just going to have you do that. In the same way, if we're going to uh, code uh, a, a DAP, we're just going to tell you what we need. And then we're going to ask you how much you want and how long it's going to take you. And then we're going to just, you know, we'll talk to you in a month. Let's see if you can actually do it. And then uh, if you can do it, uh, that that speaks enough. Like ultimately the other side of the, um, the all the other side will be the, the human side, you know, your ability to communicate and cooperate with other people. Uh, but that typically also shines really rapidly when you work with, uh, with a team. So ultimately uh, uh, through, you know, trial by fire, uh, we found uh, some of the best developers uh, that we've hired. And uh, uh, that's basically our hiring philosophy going forward. It's just we're going to put a bunch of uh, money to motivate you to, uh, to try the bounty. And if your work is good enough, uh, then we can have a chat about uh, uh, onboarding you. Awesome. So a little bit later in the conversation, we're going to get into the more like the kind of specific code that you'll be working on. But can you give us sort of like a high level business overview of the biggest sort of needs or problems at Badger that these uh, technical bounties are trying to solve, like more of just a high level strategy. What, what are the strategic challenges at Badger that, that we're trying to, to solve with some of these uh, coding challenges? Yeah, ultimately, this, this conversation gets really nuanced really fast. Uh, but to start, uh, we, we basically need uh, more developers. And so uh, there's there's always a, a kind of two 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 ways of to look at that. And the one way will be to uh, you know hire uh, you know code monkeys, let's call them people that just can do stuff. We just need more more stuff done. It's not as refined. It still requires a lot of uh, uh, you know background knowledge and uh, focus. But ultimately, we just need to do more. And so that will be something like you know writing a yield strategy where we tell you where which one to write. Uh, we just need it done, it need it done in time and safely. And so uh, that's something that uh, just uh, happens as you uh, try to uh, be on multiple chains, as you try to keep a security uh, focused process, you just need more peer reviews, more code writers, etc. So that would be the base level of uh, like, an, like, let's call it an entry level uh, job at Badger is basically, can you autonomously write a yield farming strategy given just protocol X? And, uh, you know, come back in two weeks with full code, full test, full documentation and due diligence uh, uh, of the protocol. So that, that will be the, the, the basic level. And then on a more complex level, some of the higher level challenges that we're facing have to do with uh, trust and decentralization. And so uh, if you do, uh, if you solve an issue such as, uh, let's say, swapping a token, token X for token Y, where you don't even know what token, token X and token Y are, it's not impossible. It's actually doable, especially if you trust a, a third party to give you the prices. Now, if you start to remove that third party and you're like, okay, well, I don't want to trust anybody. I want this contract to just give me the best price no matter what. Then you start to encounter uh, a lot more uh, problems. And, you know, on a scientific level, some of these issues are literally unsolvable because of uh, the, the P uh, different from NP problem, uh, which is like a computer science issue. But from an engineering point of view, uh, some of these issues are solvable and it's just a matter of being smart enough to even understand them. So on one end, we have, again, the basic level of building more stuff. And then on uh, uh, the other end, we got the, the bigger challenge of building uh, stuff that is trustless. A few examples of things we're working on now are contracts that uh, give you the best uh, on-chain price. And these are obviously read-only contracts. You just use them to, to get a quote that is an approximation. You don't, you know, you don't trust it. It's just approximation of the best price on chain. Then we have uh, a, a system to handle uh, the emission of arbitrary tokens uh, uh, through linear vesting. So a way to uh, properly reward people for holding their tokens. And then a way to distribute any token that you don't even know, literally to just scale to infinite amounts of tokens. We're working through uh, locking uh, contracts that allow to lock arbitrary tokens. And through that, uh, they allow to set up a set of uh, rewards that is custom and that is uh, basically as like a meta language on top of it to specify how the rewards are uh, built. And then we also have basic mixes as in set of contracts that use these underlying new technologies we're writing uh, to uh, basically build uh, stuff in the real world that is actually used. 
so ultimately there is a, uh, a degree of uh, research and development that is growing with time. The other example I could give is the uh, it's basically uh, option strategies. That's like a massive uh, new uh, area that if you if you're an expert in that, just reach out immediately. We probably want to work with you. And uh, uh, but ultimately there is this uh, more complicated set of issues that we're trying to work through that require uh, a very specific set of skills and uh, people that are really motivated to work on. Yeah, I mean, I just just thinking about it, like it, it seems like there's always this tension in um, in DeFi between kind of like getting things done quickly, but a little more centralized. Maybe it's like a multi-sig or maybe it's just, you know, using an off-chain source of data or something like that versus like the hardcore everything on-chain decentralization, right? So it's always trying to move between that, getting something done fast and getting something done to the true standards of DeFi. I mean, I'd say we've, uh, we're kind of past the badger. At this point, we're pretty much committed to this full decentralization. So we do have remnants of the past uh, of, uh, uh, you know, using multi-sigs to make things faster. But um, I think uh, we're, uh, we're just going to uh, just cut that out completely. So to be honest, uh, if you're listening and you're really interested in solving these issues, uh, you know, once and for all, that's what we're trying to do at that level. Uh, but you also have to uh, really respect the fact that you're not going to, uh, you know, go from Web 2 to Web 3 and be able to solve any of this stuff on day one. This is something that takes a lot of time and it has uh, uh, thousands of gotchas. And for that reason, uh, it just takes uh, way longer. So I think uh, at Badger, we're committed to these. Uh, uh, I think we, we're going to really start thinking in, you know, six months campaigns or one year campaigns where, you know, certain stuff just takes six months or a year just to even be able to have a proof of concept. And uh, so if you'd like to lead something like that, uh, I mean, you want to, first of all, build your skills, make sure you, you can even uh, think about the, the, this type of uh, problems. And, but once you do, then uh, you, you would uh, just uh, take a leadership on one. If you were part of Badger DAO, you would just uh, be like, okay, I'm going to champion this, uh, this problem and I'm going to just work on that. This is what I'll need for the next six months. And then you just go and do it. And uh, um, it's, a, it's a supportive environment where ultimately, if you are able to uh, master yourself, as in you have to organize your own work, you're going to get the resources you need to, to get it done. So the opportunity, I think the, we're really, uh, the way we structure the DAO is uh, we, we give the opportunity, or at least you can take the opportunity. And then it's really up to you to make the opportunity uh, a success because, uh, Unless you're passionate about uh, some of these challenges, uh, I don't think any human being will even try because it's just too nerdy, to be honest. Uh, so you have to you have to enjoy this type of work. Yeah, yeah. But I think to connect it back to the end users, I think it's such an important kind of phase and connected to the problems that Badger is facing. Because like, for example, like with our convex vault or like the new direction of vaults that we're taking, they're more and more complex. It's no longer just, you know, deposit in this contract and get the rewards and distribute the rewards. It's involving voting or swapping reward tokens for something else or auto compounding into different places and different mixes of things. So just as DeFi gets more competitive, the strategies at Badger have to become more advanced to offer higher levels of value to the end user. And this is this is reflects that. Yeah, uh, I think uh, what we could do uh, talking meta is we perhaps can have uh, a follow-up chat uh, at the end of the Akmani uh, podcast about uh, what we're doing exactly to make the, them uh, more trustless uh, and uh, decentralized. So perhaps we can, uh, uh, you know, put like a bookmark on this topic and uh, go through, you know, the more uh, basic stuff uh, related to Akmani ne next. And then after that, we can go back to this topic and talk about how some of the technologies that you could work on during Akmani, we're actually already using live in order to uh, enable this uh, higher degree of trustlessness and higher degree of on-chain proof that uh, uh, things are working as intended. Yeah. So let's let's go back to the developers. So maybe some someone's listening to this and thinking about getting involved with Hack Money, but like maybe give us some... Uh examples of developers that we've hired from Hack Money or kind of like success stories, people who have maybe come in at one skill level and used an opportunity like this to kind of move up the chain to more complex uh, problems and, and higher, higher level stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd, I'd love to start to say that I'm very biased uh, in the sense that I personally really like uh, both Gitcoin and If Global. So like, I, I really like both. I think uh, uh, 
there, there are different types of hackathons where if global is more structured, you can look at it for like, especially if you want to get into DeFi, it's a, a really good way to get like some structured lectures, like literally lessons about the technology. And then you just get like a bounty, which is basically the homework, uh, but you're actually being paid to do it. So it's a, it's a really an, an engaging process, especially if you, if you find a way to really do it part-time or full-time. Like he, uh, I basically, that's how I re-rolled uh, into Web3, if, uh, if uh, you don't know. But like I basically saw the if global hackathons. I remember uh, decentralizing Ethereum was one. Scaling Ethereum was the first one I did, I think. And uh, I will just, uh, you know, uh, find a shop for, uh, basically shop for topics by watching the YouTube videos and then shop for sponsor by looking at the prizes. And then you just, uh, whatever you find engaging and entertaining and rewarding enough, you just go for it. So uh, that was my experience in learning, and that's how I basically got to the DAO. Uh, but to give an actual example of a uh, core dev that is now a core dev that uh, we hired through Akmani, that will be Ayush. Ayush uh, literally submitted, uh, I believe, a yield farming strategy for a Badger. Uh, I don't quite remember which one it was. It probably was uh, either a tri crypto uh, staking strategy or maybe a uh, WBTC on. Um, on uh, Aave or Compound uh, strategy, but ultimately he wrote the best strategy. It was the number one submission. And so we pursued him through a follow-up bounty where we asked him to do some security peer reviews and to write a uh, on-chain registry. Basically, write some code that would allow us to track uh, uh, deployment of vaults. And he very quickly picked up the job and uh, he became one of the best uh, strategies we have. Uh, he's uh, um, writing strategies uh, every week and he's leading uh, some initiatives as well. And uh, he uh, is really a person we can rely on. Uh, and I think, uh, um, you know, the, the, the bounty structure really showed that and he really took uh, the best out of the opportunity. So now he doesn't need, uh, you know, to be told what to do. He just uh, figures it out and ultimately is contributing to the DAO uh, very actively. All right. So I think if you're you're listening to this, you may be coming from Hack Money, but um, I think there, there could also be some people who don't know what Hack Money is. So can you just give us a quick intro on Hack Money and then we can get into some of the specific uh, bounties that we're running this, this round? Yeah. Ultimately, Hack Money is an event by IF Global which is, uh, as far as I'm aware, a non-profit or at least a B corporation. So they, they don't pursue profit as the main goal. The main goal is to bring education of Ethereum to uh, developers. And this, uh, these are uh, mostly developer events. Uh, they tend to be uh, pretty beginner friendly. Although as a beginner, you don't, ex you don't expect to win money as a beginner, but expect to learn a lot. And ultimately, these are um, uh, typically remote-only events. And uh, uh, some of these are being brought back to, to real life because uh, they used to be, you know, pre-COVID, they, they used to be live events. But now with COVID, they were all online. And ultimately, they tend to be uh, two to four-week hackathons that are remote hackathons where every week there's a topic that uh, uh, the lectures are going to be about. And so you can go on their YouTube video and learn, uh, YouTube channel and learn some, uh, some of the stuff. And then uh, beside that, there's going to be a pool of sponsors who are putting down uh, actual cash, actual money that you can win through uh, uh, pursuing some of the challenges that the sponsor make. So ultimately, this is a hackathon where most people go in with the goal of learning or uh, you know, making some money. And then uh, the way the, the winning of prizes works is that uh, if Global will pick the winners for, uh, the, for the hackathon, but you can still win the sponsor prizes, which is actually the majority of the pot, uh, by simply uh, checking out each sponsor and uh, uh, doing the bounty that they offer. So it's basically a uh, you know, do your own hackathon where there's so many opportunities and so many things you could be doing that you can learn a little bit here and there. And then you basically choose which bounty to commit to. And then you just uh, work on that uh, over the uh, two to four weeks period. Awesome. So uh, let's get into this. Do you want to run through the bounties that we're running this time and the, uh, the code that's uh, relevant? Yeah, I believe we're going to be uh, reshaping those bounties as uh, we get closer. So uh, this may change. But at this time, uh, we're basically going to be having uh, a... Um, 
bounty for uh, writing yield farming strategies. We're going to have the top uh, first, second, and third submission for a uh, yield farming strategy with uh, uh, Bitcoin. So you want to use a tokenized Bitcoin to uh, yield farm. That's going to be one. Then uh, the second, uh, we're going to have a price pool, which means that any valid submission that uses our tech is going to win uh, a portion of the pool. So that's going to be the second one. And then I think we'll also have a third prize uh, which we'll have to agree with uh, uh, management, so I can't confirm it because you may have to be one uh, top one, two, three. I don't know if you can only do the, the best one. But I, in my head, we want to do the best uh, submission that uses the uh, Badger on-chain rewards contract. So basically, we're going to have yield farming. We're going to have a mix of stuff. And then lastly, we're going to have the Badger on-chain rewards, which is a new contract we're working on to allow a fair distribution of rewards to uh, depositors. For the for the yield farming, are you interested in strategies that are only tokenized Bitcoin as the want or the deposit token? Or are you interested in stuff that maybe has a mix of deposits or takes some other deposit and then DCAs into Bitcoin? I'd say we we are open to to anything. I'd love to see a DCA vault uh, because uh, you could actually build a DCA vault from the uh, uh, ba- basic vault and then using the Badger rewards and then create a third vault or sorry, a second vault that takes the uh, the rewards and sell them, sells them for Bitcoin. So I feel like that will actually be the best showcase of uh, all of the technology we have. But yeah, I've, I'd say we're, we're open to any interpretation and we, we're going to be very flexible in terms of uh, um, the want and uh, whatever, because uh, ultimately we're, we just want to see some new creative stuff. So I think uh, what I'll say is we're going to heavily penalize the tri-crypto submissions, and maybe even the sushi steak is submissions because we because we it's been at two years that I see this stuff, so I'm just gonna massively penalize that. Anything else is fair game. Just just show something interesting. Uh, that's what I would say. So you probably want to go for a DCA strat. Something a little uh, you know a little uh, alternative is probably more interesting. Yeah, I mean it's tough. It's like as Tridium says all the time, right? There's billions of of Bitcoin sitting around looking for yield. So like this is probably one of the toughest areas of DeFi. So exploring ways that people can stack their Bitcoin using other assets or a mix of assets or uh, something even more like options or or more uh, out there, I think is definitely the way forward, right? Yeah, let me, let me, I mean, let me give, I guess, some alpha here. Like, uh, uh, first of all, the first thing you would want to think about with all this uh, Bitcoin stuff is simply, can you just borrow 50% of Bitcoin for dollars and just use dollars? Right, because now you get fifty percent of the yield of dollars, and I think it's higher than the yield of Bitcoin. So that would be the first uh, layer. That's the first thing. Can you do that? Alternative would be to can you lever up uh, through, for example, for like Chidao? Can you go on Polygon and lever up ten x uh, on a uh, tokenized uh, Bitcoin position so that the yield becomes good because you're levering up? That will be the second idea. The third idea will be, can you just farm an option protocol? I think Premia will be an example on Arbitrum. You can farm Premia. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the option pool is maybe 10% APY and there's a risk of a massive loss. So it's actually really a scary one. But uh, the Premia APY is also really interesting. So that will be another one. Then you, got, uh, you start to get into the more uh, uh, exotic ones that actually are uh, like the ones we're really looking into, which will be, can you build a delta hedged uh, strategy? So you basically use Bitcoin to borrow dollars so that you can LP dollars and Bitcoin into a pool. And you, if you go and check some of the math uh, in the space, you'll see that uh, there is a way to literally LP uh, with zero op- uh, directionality, which means that as long as the price doesn't swing up to 40%, so it's, it's a pretty solid uh, LP strategy, uh, uh, you have no loss in your uh, principal. And so uh, you're basically farming the fees. And so it's basically, can you do that? And then uh, the thing after that will be to uh, do something similar where instead of edging through uh, borrowing uh, the uh, the other token, you could do it by uh, edging, by uh, shorting your own assets, shorting Bitcoin. That will be another one. And you can do it. There's a, a bunch of leverage protocols uh, that you can use to short uh, uh, your LP position while you're LPing. So like uh, I have no doubt that the the way there are ways to do this stuff, and I uh, you know double in it, uh, but uh, it's just uh, the difference between explaining it to you, showing it to you, and making it a product. That's what the difference is. So if you have that ability, 
to make it a product, to make it easy for people to use, easy for developers to integrate, fully documented, fully unit tested. That's what's really going to, uh, you know, if you're looking for a, 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 to work uh, with Badger DAO, that's going to really feature your strengths because now you, you built something that is uh, actually fairly complex and you made it simple for other people to use and understand. So that's what the real challenge is uh, with these uh, uh, ex- more exotic uh, strategies is that most of them have uh, baked directionality and at the same time they have... They're just too complex to explain. I've uh, we made a bunch of bounties on Gitcoin, and basically the submissions were all uh, you know this crazy. You have to you know manage twenty levers uh, or it's gonna break uh, type of strategies. And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for something that can actually be fully automated, uh, and it's autonomous. Like uh, again, it needs to be decentralized. So um, there there are deeper challenges there. Uh, and if you want to tackle them, uh, we're happy to support you through the bounty. And we're also happy to support you in the future because uh, we really believe some of these exotic strategies are going to become uh, the uh, main source of yield in the future. Let me let me ask you this. I mean, I think we, we can move on, but this is a question that just popped on, into my head. Like, what? Is, how do you think about the level of risk that is acceptable in, in one of these strategies, right? Because like, number one, you're holding... Bitcoin or ETH or crypto assets, like you're already pretty far out the risk curve. You're depositing into DeFi, even if it was like a 100% what we consider like safe in DeFi, like if it was just like a curve, depositing into curve, like the most vanilla vanilla strategies, right? What about a strategy that does have directionality in it or a strategy that could have some, you know, non-zero risk of getting liquidated if there's a big swing? Like, is that an acceptable risk in a vault that we would put or is that for what reason is that like out of bounds and these other risks are in bounds yeah i mean i would say liquidation risk is something that has to be tackled uh, on a case-by-case basis so don't uh, quote me on uh, my answer because i don't have a real like what i'm telling you is give me an actual example and i'll give you a different answer every time so it's really on a case-by-case basis i'll just give you some principles uh, first of all, the first thing we do to really uh, kind of brainwash ourselves uh, in terms of risk is that we don't think about dollar value. We always think about want. Want can be any token. In our case, it could be, let's say, WBTC. And so we don't care if uh, the strategy is uh, you know, losing money on a dollar value because it doesn't make sense to do so. And you, it, it's, uh, uh, it's a, a meta level of a conversation that is not relevant. Uh, uh, when writing a, a basic yield uh, strategy. Your basic strategy should just be based on whatever token is deposited because it could be like compound, the comp token, or it could be the Aave token or the Sushi token or whatever. And so you want to just write a strategy that gets you more of that. And so the paradox of that, I'll show, the, the simple paradox is if you write a uh, LP strategy with Bitcoin, then the, less, uh, the, the more Bitcoin cr- cr- price crashes in dollar value, uh, if you're LPing Bitcoin and USDC, for example, and dollars, you're actually going to get more Bitcoin. So paradoxically, the strategy would actually be, uh, you know, on-chain successful while the dollar value is actually being reduced. You're losing dollar value because, again, the strategies are denominated in their underlying asset. So that's the first thing you have to keep in mind. Uh, but uh, liquidation, though, means you, I'm going to lose, you know, 10%, 20% of my uh, want so obviously that's going to be a massive uh, deal. And so the second you talk about liquidation, you need to talk about how you're going to avoid that, right? You, you, like there's not going to be a, any conversation about having li- possible liquidations if there's no tool or contract or bot or whatever process that will avoid the liquidation entirely. And so that's really uh, how uh, you will handle that. And then once you have a plan, so like if, you, if you're going to write a strategy that can get liquidated and you don't have a plan for liquidation, you're going to get discarded immediately. It's a useless uh, submission. You're basically asking us to uh, teach you why we're going to be wrecked through our own experience. We're going to get wrecked for you to learn why you shouldn't have done that. So we're not going to do that. But once you show uh, a path to liquidation, then uh, it's just a matter of determining uh, the odds of it. So it's pure math. It's literally going to be about, uh, you know, looking at the volatility of the token or the asset and looking at the odds that the price changes there and then having an exact plan as to what happens when you're about to uh, hit that risk and uh, just figure out what uh, what is a to- whether it's tolerable or not. That's basically it. Uh, the way I like to think about this stuff is this. 
like ALP vault, let's say try crypto, works because the, the, stra- the vault is not taking the impermanent loss. But the end user is because if you're depositing uh, in dry crypto, you are taking the volatility of uh, if WBTC and USDT, like you, you are, whether you realize it or not. So your LP token is going to be variably priced based on the volatility of those assets. So what that means is that you can have a completely unstable asset. Let's say this dry crypto, it's unstable in the sense that its dollar value changes all the time. Uh, but it, it can be treated as if it was stable once you put it in the vault because the vault is denominating all the assets in this tri crypto LP token and not in any of the component. So the issues that you're going to have mostly in terms of risk and uh, uh, permanent loss and this type of stuff is anytime you want to swap from the, uh, uh, let's call it the stable version of the asset, the denominizable the version of the asset, to the more unstable version, the components or a mix of it, etc. So anytime you're going to do that, you risk uh, basically getting wrecked. And that's when you basically will have to do a lot more work to enable a strategy such as that. Uh, but uh, uh, anytime you minimize that by just using the LP token, uh, you, you avoid the discussion entirely. So... Uh, I mean, it's it's just a really complicated uh, situation, and uh, it's it's quite it's quite difficult to to discuss uh, uh, without a, a, um, a clear example, and it also just goes on a case by case basis. Uh, but I have no doubt that in a few years uh, we will have uh, hundreds of uh, options uh, uh, hedged, LP hedged, and uh, volatility based strategies on chain. Uh, because uh, it just is uh, a natural progression of the uh, the stuff that we're doing now. Yeah, I could ask you a bunch more questions now, but I know we got to move on. So let's let's talk about the on chain rewards uh, stuff. So like, can you give us a quick overview of the the move in towards on chain rewards and the s- specific uh, bounty that we're we're looking at and the and the code that's involved? Yeah, if that's okay, before we go to on chain rewards, uh, I'll briefly mention Vault One Point Five. Basically, it's a uh, new yield uh, farming system that uh, we also had audited by Quantstamp. We got uh, uh, the, the top votes for documentation and testing. It's been uh, thoroughly peer reviewed as well, and we'll be using it in production on Phantom. As of now, we're not going to be using it on mainnet until we're certain, uh, and we just went through all the, the kinks of it and make sure that it's uh, really safe. Uh, so, But it's uh, part of our progressive uh, commitment to further composability and decentralization in the sense that uh, the original vault design that Badger had uh, basically had a set of uh, permissioned checks that will prevent other smart contracts to interact with it. Uh, we basically breaks composability. It's the reason why, you know, when Abracadabra was popular, there was no Badger Vault for Abracadabra, simply because it was too much of a pain in the ass to integrate, to be quite frank. And so Vault 1.5 addresses that, and it also adds us on-chain tracking. We have a website called Badger Ninja that tells you every second what the future yield is looking like, and it monitors that real time because we have ways to... Uh, let the strategy tell you what's going on in real time. So it's a really cool uh, change. And with that change, ultimately, we're committing to uh, 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 composability, as in we have a new vault token. Let's allow a CDP smart contract to use it as collateral. Let's enable it for borrowing. Let's enable it for LPs, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, just uh, you, you can really build a vault, and then you can build a vault of vaults and then you can build a pool of vaults of vaults, et cetera, et cetera. You can really go uh, and use this as if it was a Lego piece because that's that's literally what it is. It's a Lego piece uh, of DeFi that you can use. And so uh, after moving to a fully on-chain uh, vault structure that also tracks the APY and uh, all its uh, health stats fully on-chain, the natural next step was to look at the uh, reward system that Badger uses. If you're totally unfamiliar with uh, this reward system, just go on Badger and look uh, as in badger.com and just look at the top right in the app, app app.badger.com. You'll see like a big box after your address. There's going to be like a star, I believe, and there's going to be like a dollar value. Those are the rewards that you can claim. And claiming of of, of those rewards uh, today is done through uh, the Badger tree, which I think was uh, uh, the best uh, uh, idea that Badger ever had, uh, which is the idea that uh, instead of dumping a token, let's say dumping curve for, you know, for one cent, 
we're going to send you curve back so you can uh, have more of it because maybe you like the protocol and you don't want to sell it for one cent. You want to wait, you know, went up to five dollars on at its peak. So like, uh, uh, you know, not it's not always the best idea to get the immediate yield now. Just get the token and see what happens. And so that's what the Badger tree allowed. Uh, but the way the Badger tree is built is through uh, basically two multi-sigs that uh, propose transactions and they verify them. And ultimately, they just have a Merkle uh, proof. And if you know anything about Merkle proof is the fact that uh, you can only get the latest state of the proof, as in uh, whatever proof is up, uh, you can use it to claim. And uh, ultimately, it's uh, really uh, a, a trusted system because you're trusting the multi-sig to generate these proofs. And so it also creates other issues, which is the tracking of your rewards. It's really hard to track these rewards if uh, uh, every time uh, the Badger tree is updated, it completely changes the proof and all the math. So uh, a better solution will be to uh, find a way to linearly vest the rewards on chain. And that's something that uh, if you go and check the curve code base, the convex code base, they've been doing it for, for years at this point. And so this is just a different take on that. It's not a fork of the convex rewards. I like to think that the convex token or Sushi MasterChef is more about the slope of the rewards because that's how they do it. They use a function called notify reward to check how the slope of the new reward emission will go. While what we do is we basically chunk up every uh, set of uh, periods in weeks and we call it epoch, where epoch is a week. And then over a week, we check what was your deposit over the week and how many points did you get because we multiply your deposit by the time spent in the vault. And then we just check at the total balance of rewards that was uh, emitted during the week and then we allow you to claim it. And that means that uh, in a few months, once uh, uh, this goes uh, from to, to audit and to live production, every single vault will be emitting to this and every single person will be able to verify the state of their rewards in real time without needing to claim them. They can claim them whenever they want, but ultimately it gives them 100% complete transparency into that math. And all of that math is going to be completely on chain, which means that anyone can use it. The side effect of this is that the Badger rewards contract actually can be repurposed for uh, many other uses. Because what it does, it's it's going to be historically tracking balances of vaults. And so it allows you to know who used the vault at a certain epoch, for example, and what they did with it. And so it ultimately could allow you to, for example, give airdrops to people that are involved in a new token. You want to incentivize a vault, just give them an airdrop every week. You want to, uh, it, it would allow you to show engagement. So you want to have proof that people deposited, you know, a year ago. It actually allows you to do that as well. So ultimately, there are side effects that make it scalable and reusable to different use cases. And so uh, my invitation uh, for you at Akmani is really to try and explore these alternative use cases as well as the base use case, which would be simply having a vault that emits to it and having people claim uh, to see what you can come up with and to see if you can uh, build something that is really interesting. Uh, the uh, logical conclusion of the... Uh, of the basic uh, premise of the Badger Awards is that uh, we're going to be having a, uh, a new structure in our vaults where our base vaults are going to be staking vaults that emit a token, a protocol token, for example, let's say Curve. And then we're going to have the Badger Awards uh, allowing you to claim the Curve token. And then if you want to write a DCA or a auto compounding strategy, you will basically take the emitting vault and the Badger tree, the Badger rewards, this new contract. And then you will write a vault that given those two contracts claims the rewards and then it sells them for whatever else you want. And so instead of having uh, out, uh, you know, dumping vaults, auto compounding vaults by default, you can actually add them as a third piece of this Lego stack that we uh, built, which allows people to choose whether they want to get the protocol token, you know, convex curve, why sell them? They, they are appreciated, the asset they appreciated, you know, 20x, why would you sell them? Uh, versus, you know, people are like, no, you know, they reached their peak, let's just sell them and I want more Bitcoin or whatever. And ultimately you can have this fully on chain, fully transparent because of the composability of these contracts. Got it. So do you have um, an idea of what the dollar value of the prizes for these bounties would be? I know on uh, Gitcoin that's that's put out in advance, but but how does it work for Hack Money? 
Um, uh, I believe we'll uh, we'll have to see. I think uh, uh, sponsor uh, prizes will be announced uh, at the ceremony for Akmani, and uh, we we have to agree that uh, with the management. So I'm not exactly sure. I think they're going to be fairly rewarding if uh, that makes any sense. Uh, but I also uh, don't know exactly uh, on the, off the top of my head uh, how they're going to work. Uh, but again, there's going to be basically a you know participant prize in the uh, prize pool. Any submission will uh, that is not uh, you know a fake submission will get uh, a piece of the pool and it's just going to be split and then there's going to be actual winners that are going to win uh, big. Awesome. So um, I can't sc- see your screen, but I know you're you're uh, recording your screen. Do you want to quickly take us through the Badger GitHub and some of the code that people uh, should be looking at and building off uh, as part of these bounties? Yeah, sure. So the the first uh, uh, code base is going to be the Badger Vaults Mix 1.5, which is ultimately a combination. Uh, uh, it's basically just the GitHub template for the um, Vaults 1.5 code base, which is uh, a combination of a Vault contract and a strategy contract. All of these are fully documented and they even have video introductions. So you can just click around and see further details for them. Uh, but ultimately, what the Badger Vaults Mix 1.5 allows you to do is it allows you to write a strategy. So in the contracts, you'll find the My Strategy file, and that's the, the file you gotta write in order to uh, have a strategy that could, you know, stake a token and uh, farm uh, a different token, or uh, uh, you know, receive a reward and sell it, etc. And then uh, you will, uh, once you're done with writing the strategy, you will go in the test folder and you will uh, customize the tests. There's also a setup folder at the top that you will have to customize to basically get a few settings and to make sure that uh, all the tests are automated for you. And uh, this is how we uh, basically save, uh, you know, tens if not hundreds of hours every time we write a strategy. So anytime you want to write a strategy that is for Badger, that's where you want to go on the Badger Vaults Mix 1.5. If you're further uh, curious about the underlying tech, you can also check the Vaults 1.5 repo. So just go on Badger and type 1.5 and you'll find Badger Vaults 1.5. You'll find the audit. You'll find the, the, there's like a 30 minute video of me showing you all about the code uh, and ultimately going over the ideas of why we even went through the effort of uh, building this and uh, how it works. So go ahead and check it out uh, to to further understand the tech. Then uh, we'll be uh, most likely forking out the code uh, for uh, Hack Money, but at this time I'm showing it off of my own uh, working branch for Badger on chain rewards. There's uh, uh, we'll basically once we have an audit, we'll add that as well. But you can go and check the rewards manager contract and uh, read it over and see uh, see what you think of it and uh, all the tests as well. And then there's gonna be a new f- uh, mix called the rewards mix that will actually contain both a emitting strategy and auto compounding strategy, as well as the uh, rewards manager, which I call Badger 3 here, but it's the rewards manager contract, uh, which basically will allow you to write a uh, the combination of strategies that I talked about, where you can have a strategy that emits and then the Badger 3 to claim, and then a strategy that sells or DCAs into uh, whatever you uh, wanna DCA into. Uh, and you're going to be able to test it as well, very similarly to the Mix 1.5. So the, those are going to be the main uh, repositories you want to check. I'm going to mention one extra just in case. It's going to be the fair selling repository. These are uh, some of our early works in finding uh, on-chain pricing. There's going to be an on-chain pricing contract that allows to get some quotes from on-chain sources and compare them, find the best one. And then there's even a way to use CowSwap to sell uh, tokens uh, on chain through uh, through the smart contract. So if you uh, find that interesting, you basically can integrate CowSwap uh, into any uh, strategy or into any code to allow to perform uh, swaps that would um, uh, you know give you a better price than doing it fully on chain. Awesome. So. If you are listening to this and want to get involved, we will be including in the notes here the the links to all these bounties. And if you are listening and this kind of stuff sounds interesting, but maybe you want a little bit more of an intro, I want to point people to a hour and a half podcast that we did maybe about a month ago, uh, How to Become a Web3 Developer Fast. That will be on our YouTube and also our um, podcast channel. Where And that has basically the full path from 
learning to code to all the different points along the way to learning Solidity or learning um, the front end packages that that we're using at Badger. So um, if you want the kind of more tactical resources, you should go there. I don't know, Alex, any other final thoughts or recommendations or uh, places that that we can send people who, who want to get involved here? Yeah, absolutely. So my last advice is to uh, have you join our uh, Badger Builders Discord. And uh, every Friday at 11.45 a.m. Eastern Time and 5.45 p.m. Central European Time, uh, we are holding office hours for Solidity developers. There's going to be both me and Dapp, who's uh, uh, the seeder of uh, Badger, the, the original dev as well. So uh, we will answer any questions. It's basically a one-hour chat where we, if uh, nobody has uh, anything, we just go over some security reviews or we talk about some code and we just... Uh, share some thoughts and just talk for an hour. Uh, but ultimately, it's uh, the best way to get the help and to uh, meet other Solidity developers that are uh, working at Badger. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, uh, hopefully we'll have a link to the uh, Discord uh, for Badger builders. And there's a channel called Hackathon Solidity Office Hours. Again, every Friday at 11.45 a.m., Eastern time and at 5.45 p.m. Central European time. So that's the best way to get additional help. Akmani will provide you with mentors and um, mentor sessions where you get further feedback. So that's amazing if you participate in the hackathon. Uh, but if you also want to just, uh, you know, hang out or uh, uh, learn from the source, from uh, the Badger devs, go ahead and use that opportunity as well. Uh, because um, it's, you're going to get direct feedback uh, to help you uh, learn and to help you build uh, you know, and avoid all the gotchas. Well, cool. Um, I think we've laid it all out here pretty well. I think there, there's no other place where you can go to actually, like if, if you want to get into Web3, the most direct way is basically to just learn the tech and start contributing and start contributing on the highest level problems that we're facing at Badger today in terms of like getting some more decentralization, writing cutting edge yield farming strategies. And if you're interested in that kind of thing, this is this is your invitation. Join the Discord, check out our code, and uh, we look forward to, uh, to chatting with you more. BadgerCast is a production of Badger DAO. Real quick before you go, please, please, please leave us a like or review on your podcast app choice so that other Badgers can find us. And if you want to learn more or contribute to BadgerDAO, the best place to get started is in our Discord server. Just go to www.badger.com and click the Discord link at the bottom. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.